All right, so a friend of the channel, fellow racer, he was at this race too, and uh, after the race, he compared his Strava file with mine. He looked at both of our average power, noticed a big difference, and he asked me, how do you navigate, how do you efficiently navigate the Peloton? Move around, move up, and do so without burning too many matches. And I realized it's not a topic I've covered on this channel, so what I'm gonna do for today's video is um, I'm gonna go through the last four and a half laps or so of the Cal Aggie crit, first big crit of the season. And um, I'm gonna talk about uh, how to stay efficient. So, uh, oh, first Matt, shoulder checking Mr. Pizza Jersey, more on Matt later. So the, the three rules, too long didn't read, three rules, staying efficient, draft whenever possible, don't touch your brakes, and um, take the inside line. So right there is a good example. I came around Mr. Pizza Jersey because I didn't want to touch the brakes. I realized I was going to have to eat a whole bunch of wind and it was single file in front of me. So I decided not worth it. And I just slotted back in. Efficient riding doesn't mean sitting at the back of the pack. Um, it's usually really surgy back there. Lines aren't taken efficiently. You get this like rubber band effect at the back and uh, not a good place to be. Plus you can get caught behind splits that might be happening in front of you that you're not even aware of. So efficient riding means you're, you're uh, maintaining your good position. And you know what they say, if you're not moving forward, you're moving backward. If you are faced with the decision to either, you know, squeeze a bunch of brakes or put your nose out in the wind for a minute and move up a few spots, it's almost always the better decision to move out, uh, cut through a little bit of wind, but move up a few, a few spots. Squeezing brakes is just like, t imagine it's taking the energy right out of your legs. Here we have uh, Bobby, new recruit on the team, putting in yet another attack. See, I, I didn't show the first 60 minutes of this race, you guys, but my team was awesome. They um, initiated or covered like every single move. And um, I more or less was able to play the, the lazy sprinter. Um, I was a little bit active for the first 15 or 20 minutes of the race. And then I was yelled at <laughs> by my teammates. And um, they're like, don't waste energy, just sit in. And um, yeah, they proved to me that uh, that I could totally like forget about the moves up the road and um, they just had everything covered. You s saw our bright pink kits in like every single move up the day, it was awesome. So that's kind of the way we, we race as a team. We're not going specifically for a field sprint. We're also not specifically going for a breakaway, but what we do is we position ourselves to be in every potential race winning position as possible so we'll have somebody in the breakaway and then if that gets caught then we'll have somebody back in the field who can sprint and everyone kind of knows their role we'll also have somebody in the chase group if there's a chase group so really you just want somebody represented from your team in in, in all positions and if you're by yourself then you have to play your strengths and um, don't let people exploit your weaknesses so here we're coming into the technical section of the course and it might look like i'm violating uh, rule number three always take the inside line but it's actually intentional because now I get to follow up with the next two right hand turns and I like the inside line better through here because you can carry so much more speed. Um, so I'm not thrilled with my position at this point in the race and you can see it's getting fast. There's probably 25 or 30 riders still in front of me and oh yeah, here we go. So, so um, didn't touch the brakes. Um, I'm not, uh, I'm not drafting, but I just moved up like a good five or seven spots and I didn't have to push some crazy watts here in the closing laps of a crit, um, going up to three, 400 watts really isn't, isn't too bad. And, and here we go inside line here. So that was, that was great. I just moved up like, like 10 or 12 positions and I did really didn't have to commit too much energy to move up here. You see, I have a couple of teammates up here too. So, so things are looking good at this point. I'm, I'm much happier with my position now. And now we're, we're approaching three laps to go. It's looking more and more likely that it's gonna be a field sprint. Despite my teammates' best efforts, there was no breakaway, or there was no successful breakaway at least. So now um, I'm the one who's been resting. My teammates have um, asked me not to, to work on the front. So now I know it's my responsibility to, uh, to duke it out in the field sprint. And, and it's, even, it's even more important now to ride efficiently. See, moved up a couple more spots here while drafting. All very good, and I found my my teammate Matt's wheel. This is this is all great. I like this position, and you know one thing I wanted to talk about too is um, especially on a crit, it's on a circuit. You usually do it what 40 times or something. So you know think about think about the first 39 times of a crit on a circuit as practice. You know you get to find the best lines. You get to find where the downwind uh, section of the road is, where the smooth road is. You get to avoid the potholes, and there's really no excuses to take inefficient lines because, like I said, you get to you get to see this 
course 40 times before it, it matters most that the the last time and oh here here's a good example too right here i'm um you can even find opportunities to move up within the pack so so there i just moved up like seven spots it didn't seem like much but with two laps of a crit left and you're moving up seven spots almost for free that's huge and one thing i'll say about moving up within the group like this is as long as your handlebars, as long as you move into a position where your handlebars are in front of theirs, that means that your front wheel is protected. And um, that's like rule number one in bike racing, protect your front wheel, because that's the part, if somebody, no if somebody knocks your handlebars or your front wheel, then you're probably gonna crash. So once your handlebars are in front of theirs, then then you're golden, then um, then you've secured that position. Now, now check this out. If I wanted to move up those same seven places here after the the technical section, this would have cost me, I mean, I'm doing five, 600 watts just, just to hold the wheel. If I want to make up those positions when it's all single file, it would have cost me like 10 times the effort. And then, and then it just slows right back down all of a sudden. And, and this is pretty typical of amateur bike racing. There's, there's no control on the front. Maybe um, some teams have like one or two guys that are, that are organizing, um, maybe putting a lead out together, but, but it's really fast and really slow and surgy attacks go, they get chased back and, uh, and that's pretty typical. So, so that means it's even more important to follow those three rules because you're going to find so many opportunities to make up make up space if you just uh, know how to navigate the group. And and that's the best feeling in the world, by the way, is is when you uh, when you swing out, you don't use any power, but you pass like ten guys who are putting out power. So anyway, back to the race here. Um, look who I'm surrounded by now. I have Anthony, Josh, Gavin, and I have two mats including my my teammate and, and lead out guy also known as no name cat one check out his channel if you haven't already so i'm in good company here you know you're in good position when uh with two laps to go you're uh, surrounded by basically the district's fastest sprinters so i just want to maintain my good position here and as we're moving up the outside boom i take a shot from that swift kid and it makes me violate a couple of my rules i said earlier one is i knocks me um, on the outside so i'm taking the long way around this corner also I'm eating all this wind forced me to do this like mini sprint where i had to put out you know eight nine hundred watts for a few seconds not exactly ideal in the last couple of laps of a crit but again i have to stay behind these guys i'm surrounded by the fastest sprinters um, i'm up right in the top you know 10 riders of the race and um, i want to stay close to, to matt my lead out guy so so it was a it was a necessary energy expenditure like if I didn't make that effort and I fell back eight or ten spots right there, then it, it might be too late to even be a factor in this race anymore. Just because I would have to do, I'd have to make up that position eventually anyway. And um, see, this case I get to, I did the, uh, I did the little mini sprint, but at least I'm sitting in now. I'm getting to rest a little bit, albeit there's there's some swarming going on. And now I've kind of lost contact with my teammate Matt, who's you can see him up the road, maybe five wheels in front of me. So happy with my position right here. You can see we can. We're taking this uh, this corner pretty smooth and um, happy with my position, but but I do want to move up and get on Matt's wheel because we're closing in on one to go and and it's just gonna be an all-out drag race um, on the last lap here. So if I remember correctly, yes. So right, yeah. So right here, I come up the inside. Surprise, people left that open, and I yell at Matt, let him know I'm here. And uh, here we go. This is this is good position right here. Strength in numbers with my teammate, Matt. But it slows down again, and uh, Gavin's not gonna let that happen, so he does this big attack on the outside. You can hear my frustration. I'm not thrilled with this because, because there's no control on the front, and a, a late race attack like this, especially from a guy as strong as Gavin, can stay away. Um, so, so fortunately, this gets chased back, and um, oh, I find a pretty good line right through there. And once I, once I find, uh, Matt C's wheel here, uh, Mike Spikes guy in front of me, not my teammate. Uh, this is this is nice. I want to stay on his wheel, and my teammate Bobby there in the pink, keeping things fast. And I was actually this is one mistake I probably made late in the race here. I probably should have just stayed on on my competition Matt's wheel back there instead of following this move with the CBRE guy, because just like being just like being too far back late in the race, it's also not very good to be too far up and. And exactly what I was afraid of happening happens right here. And all of a sudden, it's like, <laughs> I'm stuck on the front. We're one lap to go. This is bell lap. And I'm stuck on the front of the race. This is not ideal. And so you can see I'm holding I'm holding a, a decent wattage, a decent speed, just because I don't want to get swarmed. I want to keep a, a certain amount of speed. And I'm just waiting for the inevi inevitable counterattack. And there it goes. Pizza Jersey. It was pretty active all day. 
and um, I have to throw down some watts to slot back in, but, uh, but I find space, which is great. And at this point, it's just on. I have to maintain my good position through here. Yes, sir, yes. But as, as you guys probably know, it's a crit. I mean, I can go from perfect position to 20 wheels back in one corner if you take it wrong, if you have to grab a bunch of brakes or something like that. And uh, Matt comes in front of me here, and I'm just going to stay glued to his wheel. So we're getting a little bit swarmed through here, and I am just focusing on taking a clean, efficient line through this corner. I'm not getting passed through here. If anything, I'm going to be passing some people, and I'm maintaining contact with my teammate. So inside line right here, like I said, go outside, and then you get these, these two inside lines. And look at Matt just take that corner inside line like a boss. That guy shouldn't have left it open. He's asking if I'm on. I'm on. So I guess that means we're going for it. <laughs> and, uh, and Matt's so good at this distance. I'm yelling at him, <laughs> telling him to go. You've seen him in my other videos. He leads me out uh, to sprint wins. So, so this is this is pretty ambitious because we probably need one or two more teammates. But uh, but Matt goes for it, and and look at there's already gaps forming behind. That's how fast Matt's lead out is. So, even though Anthony's uh, crowding me a little bit on my left, we get to take this corner. I'm screaming at Matt. We get to take that corner as fast as possible, and uh, it's still 300 over 300 meters to go. Boom. Big Matt goes for it, you can hear me grunt. So I need to close this down immediately, but man, he got the jump on us and, uh, and he opened a gap immediately. I just sit down, change a couple of gears. This is everything I got right here. It's not my best sprint and I just barely, barely come up short. Man, it was super close. I needed five more meters, guys. That's how close it was, but uh, I lost to Big Matt. He's a cool dude. I'm sure we're gonna duke it out a lot more this year. So hit subscribe, stay tuned. See you guys at the next one. Thanks.